Hey everyone, this is Dan at SP Motorsport. On this week's product spotlight, we're gonna go over our DCT transmission cooler line kit for the GT500, 2020 plus. Um, the, main, the main reason we came up with this kit is because of a lot of the problems that you guys are probably aware of if you own these cars. Uh, people talk about it pretty frequently. Uh, there's a few issues with the factory lines on these cars. Uh, we already have a fix for the fittings and some of the problems at the transmission. Uh, we do have a seal kit. This is a solution for that problem and another style problem that we're even seeing. So we decided to eliminate the whole factory lines from the transmission all the way up to the cooler at the front of the car. You get a whole new line assembly. So feed and return all the proper billet fittings to adapt and connect everywhere. There's no cutting. You can actually remove the factory lines, save them, put them back on if you want. You don't have to cut them. There's no compression fittings or anything like that. Uh, the line kit, uh, as I said, is a complete line replacement. It is a stainless steel braided dash six assembly with a uh, clear vinyl coating on it. So it's not rough, it's very smooth. Uh, nice reinforced setup. All the hardware lines, everything is all anodized aluminum. Uh, you may be asking why we have why we came out with a different kit from the seal kit that we already sell, which we still sell that, but there are different issues. And some people don't want to even deal with the factory lines because of things that they've read and some of the stuff that we've seen. So what we're going to do is kind of get up and close and personal with the kit here and show you actually some of the problems that we see and uh, the way that we're addressing those issues. All right, guys. So what we did here is this is actually the factory transmission cooler line here where it goes into the transmission itself. On the TR9070, which is a Tremec tranny that's in these cars, this is a compression style uh line here so what they do is they they i shouldn't say compression style but it's compression onto the actual bracket to hold the line in the tranny so the bracket is compression fitted to the line itself so the line's one piece this is not a two-piece setup they slide the bracket over it and they hold it like this and then compress it around it so this causes two issues the one issue that we actually fix with our seal kit which we can put a photo up of that the seal kit is actually dealing with the alignment problem. So one of the issues with this, when you compress these, the bracket will actually end up being in there crooked. It'll, it'll, it'll crock it one way and make it to where when you push this up in the tranny and tighten the bolt down, it'll actually do this. And it won't center in the bore. And the seal that goes on here is very thick. It's wide, it's thick, and it has a decent amount of movement in it. So when you tighten that bolt down and it moves, it wants to leak around those seals. So our seal kit basically eliminates that. That was the one issue, the main issue that we covered. The other issue that we have found over time is we're starting to see where they compress this, we're starting to see hairline fractures in the actual, the bulge where it's compressed around the uh, flange there. So it'll crack and then it'll want to leak out of here, which obviously the seal kit may not fix that if that is the exact problem you're having. So what you can do, you know, if you're trying to decide whether you want to replace the whole line and eliminate the factory lines entirely, look at your car, you know, pull the line out, look at it, inspect it really well and see if this is cracking uh, around that flange area, then obviously if we're just doing an alignment seal, it's obviously not going to fix a, fix a crack line. So being that there were so many issues with these cars, and a lot of the problems that we were seeing with the DCT lines and the transmission cooler lines, uh, we wanted to basically create a full-blown solution. So it wouldn't be a Band-Aid for one or the other. And unlike some of the other stuff on the market, we wanted to offer something that was a complete solution. So you weren't having to cut the factory line off and run a compression fitting and adapt it to AN or anything like that. You don't even have to cut the factory lines. So if your lines aren't have not failed or you don't have a leak and you just want to do a preventative thing, you can actually pull the lines off your car, put them to the side, 
and and they you can sell them with the car, keep them for later, whatever you want to do. You don't have to cut them off. So this line, repl these lines replace it entirely. So we did a, a custom style fitting here that uses a, the factory retaining clips and everything, just like the factory lines do, that adapt it right over to the proper size AN. And this is basically the same fitting that's on the cooler. And you'll literally just slide it on like that and you put the retaining clip in and you're done. Put a wrench here and a wrench on the line and it'll thread right on. So the nice thing with that is you don't have any crazy adapting going on. You're not going to different style fittings to get this all to adapt. It's two fittings, you know, the line end fitting that goes on the cooler and you're done. Same thing at the actual transmission. So these would be your cooler fittings and the actual lines that go up in the transmission are obviously very similar in design, but the thing that you're not gonna get is the deflection issue with these because they're billet, obviously. So you'll be able to reuse the factory seals on this. You don't have to worry about them getting crooked in there. When you tighten the bolt down, they'll be perfectly straight. And that takes care of that. And once again, single fitting adapts right over to the dash six line and you can run them up. It takes care of most of your pro or well, all the problems uh, as far as the leaking issues and the factory line downsides. So as we said, it's a vinyl covered hose, so it's not rough. Um, it's nice to route, it won't scratch anything. Uh, very clean appearing, uh, they work very well. All right guys, now that we went over everything on the table and you kind of understand what we're accomplishing with the kit and also letting you guys know, you know what, what some of the issues really truly are and why they leak. Uh, I think that's something that hasn't been touched on well enough and you know we kind of want you guys to understand that, especially if you're purchasing the product. So. What we're going to do now is we're going to take the kit, we're going to install it on one of our test cars and kind of show the routing, the uh, quick assembly of it. It's very simple. Um, these hoses will come completely assembled. So you're not going to have to cut hose to length or do anything special like that. They're different length hoses with different ends on them to do exactly what you need to do to get them on. And they're all cut properly so and assembled. So. What we'll do now is we'll go throw this on our test car, get you guys that footage and get back to you. All right, guys, now that we're under the car here, we'll uh, pull your belly pan off. All the bolts are obviously up in the front because we need to gain access to this cooler here. So you're gonna wanna pull the belly pan off. These clips can come off. There's little uh, sir clips in here that you can use a, let's see right there in the end. You can use a pick to pull out and then keep those because we'll, we'll actually reuse those clips. And then there's a couple uh, braces here that, are, that we will actually be able to zip tie to the new lines that clip to the fan shroud. So pop those loose. And then coming back through here, actually come over on this side here. I already loosened this bolt, but what, what we can do, pop it out. You'll take this bolt out to 10 mil. And then this easily just bends up and out of the way. And then the lines will drop out. There's a 13 up here and another bracket that holds the lines. Josh can see that. I think so. There's the bracket. Yep. We'll actually be removing that one entirely. So that one, that one will just get unbolted and taken out. And then if we follow the lines down across here to the trans, I like to disconnect the sensor to keep it out of the way. You got two eight millimeter bolts and all this will pull out. And then it's just a matter of kind of weaving and pulling and moving stuff around to get them out of there. We'll go ahead and get a couple clips of us just taking all these bolts out and uh, speed right along. 
All right, we'll go ahead and remove the eight millimeter bolts that both aligns to the actual transmission. Take those out. And then these will pull straight down. All right, now I'll go ahead and pull this 10 mil out on the mount bracket here. And we'll actually reuse this to bend it up. Pretty easy. Get enough room there to pull that down out. All right, guys. We're going to go ahead and remove this bracket here, and this will stay on the lines. Uh, I do want to note this is a 15 millimeter bolt, or nut rather. Alright. Alright, guys, so now that we got all that stuff loose, midway between the cooler and the actual transmission, these lines arc up here to go up over the cross member and there's two unions in the middle there which you can split you pull the clips out and you can split and then it makes it easier to pull lines off the car so we're going to go ahead and pull those circ clips out break the line up there and then we can start getting the lines off the car all right guys so here's that little metal spring clip really easy to get get removed you basically just take a pick put it in there hook it you'll see one end of it's kind of open and just pull down on it kind of work it out of there like that and now this will be free to move and you can slide it right off all right guys now we got all the clips out bolts everything that's holding the lines in place we'll go ahead i like pulling the trans side down first let that drain and then we'll pull the cooler side let that drain and then we can split that midpoint and kind of pull everything out. So this car actually had our DCT seal kit in it, which worked out really well for this car. Um, but obviously we need to put lines on it and test them out and we're using the same vehicle. so. We'll go ahead and let that drain. Turn these lines down a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and pull the lines on the front and clean everything up under here. And we'll be able to go ahead and start putting the new lines in. Good. All right, guys, so the lines are off the car. We're gonna reuse the factory seals. And this is what it would look like when you pull it out of a factory car, you're gonna slide this rubber piece off. And then there's a cone also. This cone kind of tapers for the bore of the transmission. And you're gonna want that point, it's gonna taper thinner towards the top. So you're gonna wanna face that smaller diameter upwards. And then you can basically just take them off and come over to your fittings. And that'll go just on, just like factory. Just like that. And then clean these up, lube them, and you're ready to put them in the car. All right, guys, so something simple and a, a thing that we'd like to have you take note of is if you look at the actual tips on the, end of, on the ends of the factory lines, they are different lengths. And if you look at the fittings that we provide you with, they are also different lengths. So taking note, when these came off the car, they were basically positioned like this. And your lines will stay locked together. The short one actually goes towards the front of the car. The longer one goes towards the rear, as so. So we'll go ahead and lube these O-rings up, get them up in the trans. All right, reinstall the eight millimeter bolts. These are ready. All right, guys, so on the spring clips that you removed, you should have four of them. You're going to reuse two and the obviously the adapters are set up to utilize them so what you're going to do if you look at the spring clip on the back edge of the c there's a point that sticks out that point needs to go in one of these slots other than anything you know any other orientation is fine it's just you're going to want to line that up with one of the slots on the back of this so if you can picture putting it on sliding it down over you can see where the holes there 
you're just going to push it right down over top like that and it'll pop right in. And then the cool thing is with these clips, you can actually lube up the O-ring, leave the clip in it and push it right on the line. You don't need to install the clip on the actual cooler itself. So you can do that on the bench. Alrighty, so on the cooler itself, we'll go ahead and put your adapter on here. Locks on just like that. We're keeping caps on until we get the lines ran so we're not making a mess. But both of these adapters are also the same. So they'll go on either side, like so. Get the O-ring to seat and then just push it and it'll snap right on. All right, so obviously there's two different lines in the kit. The longer line, you'll notice, has two different ends on it. You have a straight and a 90 degree. The straight end is going to go to the far side of the cooler. So that'll be the easiest way to figure that out. So we'll go ahead and we'll be able to start running our lines now. As I said, straight line goes to the far end of the cooler. Now when you tighten these down, you're going to want to use a wrench on the actual fitting, the adapter fitting to the cooler, and then you're going to want to use a wrench on the line as well. Obviously, these do not need to be extremely tight. Just snug them up. We routed from the straight fitting, follow the factory path, route down through here. This line actually goes to the top side of the bracket. See right here, falls down around. Leave everything somewhat loose for now until you get all your lines in. And then this goes to the front fitting. And if you actually come on this side and look, this fitting is labeled from cooler as well. That's an easy way to know that you have the proper fitting in there and then a 90 degree end on the hose. So what we'll do now is we'll go and run the other line from the cooler back to here. And then we'll kind of show you placement and how to kind of attach everything. All right, guys, when you're routing this in the factory path here, you're going to want to make sure it's, it's not easy to do, but you could do it. Make sure you stay above the sway bar when you're routing everything through here. It's really the only major thing that you gotta watch. So we'll go ahead and thread this on here. Make a mess. Same thing as the other side, two wrenches. We'll snug that up. Come back here. That line will go right here on the back fitting. Right on that. I'd recommend at least leaving the back ones loose for now until you get everything kind of in place. Get everything routed the way you want it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and actually reuse this as well. And to release these, pretty simple, there's a little tang here. All you're going to do is push that back, and when you push that back, just lift up on it and pop that off your lines like that. And then we'll actually use this, kind of center it up where it travels upwards in the car here. We'll show you where to put it on. There we go. Kind of snap it midway up. And you can move this around. I mean, every car may be a little bit different, but that it is a nice divider. Keep the lines separated. So on the uh, cooler side of the lines, we're pushing on the cooler there. You'll see that there's some rubber isolators with zip ties, and these little clips are the ones that actually push onto the fan shroud. So you can go ahead and cut these off, and you can kind of use these at your leisure and wherever you think you actually want them at. Um, there is a single one down here, so that can only go in one place, obviously. Um, but they can be reused because these clips actually, they actually slide out. So you can pull them out like that. And then you can use the isolators. There's also another plastic clip up here 
that we can pop off and reuse as well. Nice thing is we didn't have to cut any lines or any brackets to take these off. So the cool thing is, is even though you're taking these clips off, you can still put them back on the other lines as well if you wanted to. All right, guys, so we can have a look here. You can see where we reused the isolators and the zip ties and the clips to actually hold the line up, just like the factory line. And then we run it up through the factory path, up and over the sway bar. And it continues down through here. And then what we'll do is this was just a separator one. And we're going to wrap a zip tie around that, throw your bolt back in here, and then right to the trans. And now once you're happy with your routing and everything, you can go ahead and take your wrenches and tighten up all your fittings. All right, guys, now that we got these lines on, go over your routing. You kind of saw how we did it. Um, obviously, they're flexible lines, so you can kind of route them in, or route them and stabilize them as you see fit using the factory stuff and clips. You can do that. Uh, go over all your fittings. Make sure they're nice and tight. You don't want to get crazy with them because they're aluminum. Um, but that pretty much covers it. You know, you want to you want to follow the factory path. Make sure your seals are lubed up, your O-rings are lubed up before you put it together. Snug everything up, and then you have the worst part left, which is taking the belly pan on and off. But before you do that, we're going to put a link in the, or not a link in the video, but show you a picture of the uh, fill description from Ford on the trans. That's basically what you're going to want to follow. So we'll show you how to, we'll show you that. And then run the car. Do that process, leave the pan off, and then check your levels, make sure everything's good and you got no leaks. Throw it back on and you're all set. All right, guys, now that we got the kit on the car, you can kind of see what's all involved and what you're getting into to do it. You can use the video to reference or the instructions on the website. We'll have pictures of everything up. You can order the product there. If you have any questions on anything in the kit, you can email us or call us. That pretty much covers this week's product spotlight, and we'll catch you on the next one.